So, I just got this fancy new dive computer, the Sunto D5, about a month and a half ago, and I've been using it as my primary dive computer since then. Since I've been using it multiple times a week now, I've gotten about 40 dives with it now, and I've got a lot of things to say about it after diving very long time with the Oceanic Geo 4.0 just before this. So this video is gonna be all about the pros and cons and my conclusions with this dive computer specifically. If you're new to this channel, my name's Eli. I'm a Patty Scuba instructor and also marine conservation staff at the Whale Shark Oceanic Research Center. If any of that is of interest to you, I definitely encourage you to subscribe to this channel and also check out my Instagram account. But at the Whale Shark Oceanic Research Center and also as a scuba instructor, I use a dive computer all the time as I'm usually diving about two to eight times per week. I've had about 250 dives in the last six to seven months, and most of those were with the Oceanic Geo 4.0. And the Oceanic was really, really nice, and I really enjoyed working with it, and I had no problems. Um, but I, it, it just stopped working uh, about a month and a half ago, so I had to get a new primary computer while that one was getting fixed. Um, so I decided to go with the Sunto D5. So I've got about 40 dives with this one now. So I now want to talk to you about the things that I really like about this new computer. So to start off, the first thing I really like about this dive computer is that it's conservative. So I know that's a little weird for something to like about a dive computer, but I really enjoy as an instructor having the most conservative computer on a dive because as I'm leading other divers, it's nice to know that no one has a lower decompression limit than me and it just gives me a little bit more comfort that I'm giving everyone the safest dive possible. So what I mean by this being a conservative computer is that almost every single dive, if I look at my computer and I look at someone else's, I have got the most conservative decompression. I always have the lowest decompression limit of anyone. So this computer has a really careful ascent rate. So if you're moving at any faster of a rate than turtle pace, then your computer is going to even add time onto your safety stop. So if you excel past the ascent rate, that is um, at the maximum limitation of this, it's going to add 30 seconds onto your safety stop, which I really like because sometimes that just happens um, during a dive and it just is maximum safety. I also really like that you can change the conservatism on the Asunto D5. I've never changed it because I enjoy having a conservative computer and I also don't want to um, make it less safe or mess with it when I'm not entirely sure what it's going to do. So I just keep it as it is, but you can change it if you want. It's nice that I even have the option to do that if I wanted to. I also really enjoy the display. Um, I really like the color on it and I really like how big it is underwater. It's really clear to see all of the things that you need to see when you're underwater. And one of the major complaints that I saw before I was buying this is that the display isn't very bright. It's not, but I've never had a problem with it in looking at it in sunlight or looking at it underwater. It really is not a factor at all. And I honestly don't think I would like if it was much brighter because it just it just looks very classy in this way out of the water. The next thing I really like about this computer is the app. I really like the app and how many statistics it gives you. It gives a really nice display as well. I'm gonna actually just put a little video to the side here of what it looks like. Um, it gives some really cool statistics and charts to show you everything that you've done with your dive and all of the dives kind of looking at them at a larger level. It shows you your dives per month, which is really cool to see how many hours and minutes of diving you've done or free diving. Um, your total dives at the end, you can see the total dives that you have. And I also have a dive time of 29 hours. Since I've gotten this computer, I've spent 29 hours underwater, which is really cool to see. You can see the maximum depth, 
that you've ever gone. And I also like that it's really fitness oriented, although this doesn't really have any fitness capability. I also really like the in-depth statistics you get for every single dive that I've done. And one of my favorite parts of each dive and looking back on it is the dive profile. So I'll, I'll go ahead and put a little video of that up to the side, but you can see what specific events happened throughout the dive. You can go to show events and you can see what happened along the way. I didn't have any gas switches because I don't do tech, but you can see when the dive started, the there was some kind of ascent speed alarm if you were going too fast. You can see a mandatory safety stop when the safety stop was started, if it was started early, all those kinds of things. You can go in detail back through your dive and every single thing that happened, which I think is so cool. There's also a pretty cool chart for temperature where you can see the temperature variations throughout your dive, which is pretty cool and then you get all of the normal regular stats that are provided for a dive computer anyway, like your dive time, max depth, bottom temperature, average depth, and all those sorts of things. You can also add your location, which is pretty cool for a log. You just tap the coordinates that you are most close to on the map and you can see where all your dives are on a broader map in the main menu. And you can also put a picture per dive, which I think is really cool for logging purposes as well. The next thing I really like about this dive computer is the ability to add a pod. I don't currently have a pod because I wasn't willing to pay for it initially. And I was also a little bit weary of the pod just with having moving away from the SPG was um, intimidating for me, but the having the option is really wonderful and once you have a pod you can get your air consumption rate Which I think is just so cool that you can get that on a dive and as a scuba diver see how much air you're consuming at different parts of your dives or different types of dives. That's a super cool thing to see to become a better diver. It also tends to be more accurate and trustworthy than a standard pressure gauge, which can be faulty if you get any amount of water or water damage in the pressure gauge also. Something else that I absolutely love about this computer is the free diving mode. I am also a free diver, a beginning free diver, but I am um, a free diver and I absolutely love having the option to turn my scuba computer into a free diving computer. And if you have used a free diving computer before, it gives simplified information, but it gives the essentials. It also gives the number of dives that you've had in a series of dives for free diving and the max depth and time that you spent. And also the thing that I absolutely love when you're free diving is the, uh, it, the fact that it will have a green bar going all around the outside. That's five minutes total. And it basically ticks along the way until you've hit the five minutes and it's filled up all the way to make sure that you have a proper rest between your dives. I found that this is such a great way to keep track of your recovery between free dives and make sure that you have an optimal next free dive. Super cool feature and I absolutely love the free diving feature of this. The next thing that I really like about the Asunto is that you can get texts and phone calls also on your wrist and that this computer is small enough to be comfortably worn as a watch. It's a little bit heavy and it's a little bit large, but it still works and is still pretty sleek looking as a watch. I use it all the time as just my normal watch and you can get texts and phone calls on it, which is pretty cool. You can't respond to them or really do anything other than basically just dismiss the notifications, but to have the option is pretty cool since sometimes I just don't feel like taking out my phone and checking them. So now to talk about some of the cons for this dive computer. I really do like it a lot, but there are some things that I am definitely missing and I'm definitely a little frustrated about. So now I'm gonna talk about those. So the first thing is the most annoying thing and that is the battery life, which is very short. It's never going to make it through two full days. I have to basically charge this every single day since basically every day I am free diving or scuba diving so I am constantly using this all the time and constantly using its battery. The dive time that you get on it is a total of 11 hours and the average usage that you get of it is about 17 hours 
if I'm remembering that correctly, it usually will make it through a full day, but it will always need to be charged before the next day, especially if I've been diving. The next thing that is a very, very frustrating thing about the Sunto is the fact that it locks. It is so extremely frustrating. If you do something that the computer thinks that you're doing something very dangerous, then it will lock the computer and you cannot use it for 48 hours. It is extremely frustrating. This happened, I'd heard about it before, but I hadn't experienced it yet. Last month, actually, I um, had only had this for about a few weeks and I was doing a dive that was off the dock. It was two meters deep for 25 minutes. And I surfaced in the middle of it because I, needed to surface because it was a workshop and my computer locked for 48 hours because I it said I didn't do a safety stop which is ridiculous because I was at two meters for 25 minutes a safety stop is not even required but this thing is so conservative that it is going to um, lock if you do things like that. I think I had also surfaced multiple times during that workshop so it was really confused but yeah, it locked for 48 hours and I was diving the next day, so I was forced to find a backup computer. So it was really, really inconvenient. I was lucky that another instructor was willing to give me their backup computer. Yeah, so that is a big drawback of this computer and kind of requires you to have access to a backup computer if you are a regular diver all the time. The next con that I have for this computer is that there's no fitness statistics. And I know that's expecting a little bit much out of this computer, but just seeing the app and how geared towards fitness it is, it would be really nice to have something like calories or to see my activity levels throughout the day or something like that. But I know that there isn't the cap capability of doing that within this specific computer. But I know that there are Suunto watches that have full fitness capability to them. So I really wish that a future Suunto would actually have fitness capability as well, like the Garmin Descent, which has diving and fitness capabilities together. It would be awesome to be able to track those things within the app. Even something as simple as nutrition, which my watch doesn't even need to do. So now for some conclusions and some thoughts to some of you out there that are considering getting the Sunto D5. Overall, I really love this thing, but will probably end up upgrading at some point in my life to get a computer with fitness statistics as well, just to have like a fully functional dive computer probably going to be the Garmin Descent Mark II, which is absolutely amazing, but it's kind of like the Mac Daddy of all dive computers. But fitness statistics aside, I still would recommend this to many people as it is a really just wonderful computer and watch to have. So those are my thoughts on the Suunto D5. I hope you guys liked this video and found it valuable. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Until next time, <laughs> bye.